Hello, and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. Welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast, episode 37. This episode is being recorded for release on January 3rd, 2022. So if you're listening to this at some point in the future, know that it's not a it's not all about the happy new year, although I know that we are all in a way have this mixed emotion of of relief and anticipation and, you know, a little bit of uncertainty whenever we go into a new year. But I wanted to record something specifically about this because I want to encourage you that no matter where you are in your career, in your job search, that there's a lot to be grateful for. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that. And when you go to the show notes, you're going to see a link to get access to a free career workbook that I created just for you to help you get a sense of what you might do in this new year, to get a mindset that will support you in that goal, to create a strategy around your career goal in this next year, or any time you want to set a goal for your career. So be sure to check that out in the show notes. But I want to talk today about how to be grateful for your career. And I love this quote that I found. And the the workbook is sprinkled with inspiring quotes to help you just create that sense of imagination and anticipation for what might be out there for you. I love this one by Melody Beatty. It goes like this. Gratitude turns what we have into enough and more. It turns confusion into clarity. It makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. That's why I want this week's episode and starting the new year to be about being grateful, being grateful for your career, and even being grateful for your job search. And listen, I know for some for some of you and for me too, when I found myself in job search mode, sometimes it was really hard to be grateful for what I was going through in that moment. I recently did a poll on LinkedIn about what, if you could wave a magic wand, what would be the things that you would get rid of? What would be the challenges that you would get rid of? And listen, a job search is full of a bunch of things that challenge you. Ghosting, rejection, online applications, uploading your resume, and then having to fill everything out again. It like it doesn't really make sense. Even interviews. One of the polls, I think it was like 46% of people said that they would get rid of the interview process. So here's a few tips on how to be grateful for your career. Number one, I'd love you to list, and even if you stop the podcast, that would be even more awesome, list seven things you appreciate about your career so far. Maybe you got a great promotion. Maybe there was a time when you overcame a a challenge in a relationship. Maybe you look back on a team that you led and they achieved more than any of you expected. Man, those are some really awesome things to look back on and appreciate, not just for the metric of it. Some of those things you appreciate certainly have metrics. You know, if you overachieved a sales quota or you met a deadline or you improved a deadline, you delivered something on time that had previously always been late by the previous leader. These are all things to appreciate. 
But I also want you to go deeper than that. What do you appreciate about the value that those things brought you? The experiences that you carried with you? What if it was your very first time being a leader and managing a team and the challenges that you faced and the challenges that you overcame? Simply learning by doing and navigating those relationships. Those are the things to go deeper with. Pick seven things and give it some thought. Really understand that you have accomplished some stuff. Wouldn't it be cool to have a sense of wonder about those things and really give yourself credit for it? You know, I'm all about the we of things, but sometimes it's so good to own those great results and talk about the I of it. What did you do? What did you create? Next, I want you to write out in detail an accomplishment that you're most proud of. Maybe one of those seven can be built out a little bit further to an accomplishment that you feel really, really good about. And it could be super early in your career. It could be something that just happened last week. Listen, if you find yourself in job search mode, this is such a key component of building yourself up, not only for what's next for you and the goals that you're setting, but also for preparing for an interview, for really getting yourself in the headspace that you need to be in to approach all of those conversations with ease and certainty. If you've downloaded my interview prep worksheets, you know this really is step one because when you feel good, you are turning on higher levels of critical thinking and that is always a positive. So now that you've done your seven things that you appreciate and an accomplishment you're most proud of, what can you feel grateful for in your career? You know, I look back on mine and I actually feel quite grateful for the times that I was let go. And I know that sounds crazy. And if you have been recently laid off, if you have undergone something that wasn't your choice to go through in terms of losing a job, sometimes that can feel like such a trite thing to say. In fact, when it happened to me one time, I I got demoted because I was in retail and hey, retail's that kind of business, man. If you you aren't increasing, then you're going backwards and, and sometimes getting demoted is what happens. And when it happened to me, uh, my boss at the time said, one day you're going to look back on this and it's going to be one of the best things that ever happened. And listen, that was not what I wanted to hear in that moment, but it did turn out to be true. I went back to the retail division that I started in. I had amazing success again. I also had the opportunity to make my move into wholesale from that circumstance. And it wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have been open to it. I wouldn't have seen the possibilities unless I had gone through that moment. You know, I'm also grateful for the toxic environments that I've worked in. Uh, I have a article on LinkedIn about how to work with a difficult boss. Go check that out. I'll put the link in the show notes. But there are times that try you. And if it's really weighing on you in your mental health to be working in a toxic environment, then please go get some help. Talk to a mentor, get a coach, find someone, talk to your doctor about it. The the weeks leading up to me getting fired, to getting demoted, I went to see a therapist because, listen, guys, I'm a high achiever and not achieving those goals and anticipating what might be happening was tough. So I got some help. And if you find yourself in that situation, I want you to go find some help, too. But the thing that I appreciate about the difficulties and the toxic work environments, it forced me to start 
looking for something to run towards. That might start out as running away from something. I totally get it. But when you have that inkling of, I need to get out of here, it's your moment to stop and look for what might be next for you. And when you get past it, when you can look at it and be grateful and realize, just like the quote says, that it gave you clarity about what you're worth. It gave you clarity about what you are not willing to put up with anymore. And that is always a good thing. That's always a good thing. And the last thing about being grateful is everything you do, everything you've accomplished throughout your career is an accumulation. When you pivot, when you change, you're not leaving anything behind except the stuff you want to leave behind. What you're taking with you, those relationships, the way they enriched you, the skills, the experience, the value that's accumulated because of what you've accomplished in that role, the big things and the little things, the things that have hard metrics, and the things that are relational. All of that value goes with you. And trust me, you can leverage every ounce of it towards your new goals and the new things you want for yourself. So take a moment, go through these exercises. The link to access the workbook will be in the show notes. Go through all of the exercises that I have in that workbook and set your sights high for what's possible for you. Listen, I tell all my clients, there is nothing you can say that's gonna shock or surprise me about a career, but I will also tell you this, that there's another side and that you get to choose what to leave behind and what to take with you and what you take with you is powerful. It will serve you when you choose to let it serve you. All right, be grateful. Happy New Year and talk to you soon. Hey, if you enjoy listening to this podcast, you have to come check out my Love Your Work Life programs on Teachable. You can choose from on-demand courses or personalized one-on-one coaching with me. We take all of this material and apply it so that you can live it and create the career you want. Because when you love your work life, all the other parts of life get better too. So go to Love Your Work Life Teachable as search terms or love-your-work-life.teachable.com. I will see you there.